What's up? It's Fridge here with Statifying Football. This is week seven of college football. These are the midday games, the 3.30 games. Starting off with uh, the big game of the week, or one of them, Kentucky, number 11, Kentucky, against newly minted number one, Georgia, Kentucky. They destroyed LSU 42-21. to They were better than I thought. Will Levis, 14-17, 145 passing, three touchdowns, plus 75 rushing yards, and two touchdowns on the ground. Chris Rodriguez ran, ran for 147 and a touchdown. Cavassi Smoke ran for 104. They ran for 330 yards as a, as a team and had four sacks defensively. Georgia, their defense looks great. Again, they beat Auburn 34-10. Stetson Bennett was okay, 231 passing and two touchdowns. Lad McConkey, five catches, 135 and a touchdown. They had four sacks themselves. I'm still not sold on Kentucky. Yeah, they beat Florida and LSU, but those are two kind of, seems like mediocre teams. However, this, I don't understand this football season, so maybe Kentucky comes out of nowhere and wins the SEC East with a big victory here. I still don't think that'll happen. I think Georgia wins and probably wins pretty big. All right, Purdue and Iowa. Purdue coming off a bye. They lost two weeks ago to Minnesota, 20 to 13. Aiden O'Connell, 371 passing, one touchdown, one pick. David Bell, six catches, 120 in that game. Iowa had an, a. It was a really good game against Penn State. They won in a slugfest, 23 to 20. Spencer Pichas, 195, two touchdowns and a pick. They forced four turnovers in that game, which helped aided them to that win. I think Iowa is one of these few sure things in this foot this 2021 football season. I think Iowa should be able to beat Purdue. BYU and Baylor, this is kind of a big game though. Baylor did get upset last week against Boise State. They lost 26 to 17. Jared Hall passed for 302 and a touchdown and one pick. Gunnar Romney, four catches, 102 yards. They turned over four times. They can't do that against a good Baylor team. Baylor beat West Virginia 45 to 20. Jerry Bohannon, 336 passing, four touchdown passes, plus one rushing uh, on the ground. Tyquan Thornton, eight catches, 187 yards, two touchdowns. They had 525 total yards of offense. Defensively, they had six sacks in that game. And this actually could be kind of, I mean, the over-under is 49. That seems really low to me. I think it may blow past that. But I do think BYU is still kind of overrated. I mean, Bay looks like a, a Big 12 contender. I'm going to say Baylor wins that game. All right, Western Kentucky and Old Dominion. Western Kentucky, they lost in an awesome shootout to UTSA, 52-46. to Baylor's Bailey Zappi, 523 passing yards, five touchdowns, one interception. Jared Stern, 16 catches, 195 yards, and two touchdowns. Mitchell Tinsley, five catches, 102, and a touchdown. They had 670 yards of offense in that loss. Old Dominion lost to Marshall in overtime, 20 to 13. DJ Mack was eh. 9 of 22, 106 passing, one touchdown, two interceptions. Blake Watson ran for 168 yards there. I think finally Western Michigan, they played, their four losses are against, uh, I think, a 4-1 Army team, a decent Indiana team, a 6-0 Michigan State team, and a now 6-0 UTSA team. I think Western Kentucky beats Old, Old Dominion and should be able to blow them out. All right, UAB Blazers and the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. UAB, they beat a good Florida Atlantic team, 31-14. Dylan Hopkins, 173 passing, two touchdowns, plus 32 rushing yards and a touchdown. Uh, it was their defense that won that game. They had eight sacks, four turnovers, and they had a 100-yard interception return for a touchdown. Southern Miss, they lost 26-13 to UTEP, the UTEP Miners. Jake Lang, uh, 239 passing, two touchdowns and a pick. They only had 15 rushing yards. I don't think they'll be able to keep up with UAB. UAB's defense is still one of the best in the country. Uh, and if if Southern Miss only ran for 15 rushing yards against a good UTEP team, I don't see how they can even keep up with UAB. I'm going to go UAB winning that. All right, Miami Hurricanes and North Carolina Tar Heels. Miami coming off a bye two weeks ago. They lost on a missed field goal at the end. They lost to Virginia 30-28. to Tyler Van Dyke came in to play for an injured D.R. King. 203 passing a touchdown on a pick. Cameron Harris ran for 111 and two touchdowns. We'll see if D.R. King is healthy enough to play that one. North Carolina, they lost another one. They lost, unfortunately, to Florida State 35-25. to Sam Howell, 203 passing, two touchdowns. He did run for 108 yards. Josh Downs, nine catches, 121 and a touchdown. If D.R. King plays, I expect a shootout in this game. But it seems like Miami, both teams are pretty inconsistent. So this really could be anybody's game. Could come down to last second touchdown. 
Unfortunately for our Miami fans, I'll root for Miami, but I think uh, North Carolina might come out with the victory. All right, the Pitt Panthers and the Virginia Tech Hokies. Pitt coming off a bye two weeks ago. They beat Georgia Tech 52-21. to Kenny Pickett has been on fire this season. 389 passing, four touchdowns. Taysier Mack, five catches, 121 in a touchdown. Jordan Addison, six catches, 117 in a touchdown. That 580 yards of offense. Uh, and a pick six in that game. Virginia Tech lost late to Notre Dame. The Notre Dame's overrated still. Virginia Tech probably very easily could have won. But they lost 32-29. to Braxton Burmeister, 184 pass, passing in a pick, but ran for 49 in what was almost the game-winning touchdown. Uh, they had an interception return for a touchdown on that one. I don't I don't know that they'll have enough offense to quite peak, keep up with what Pitt has been doing this season. Maybe their defense can keep it close, but I'm going to still say Pitt should win in the end. All right, Toledo and Central Michigan. Toledo, they lost uh, by two points to Northern Illinois, 22-20. to uh, Carter Bradley, 6-14 passing, 50 yards. He wasn't very good, so Daquan Finn came in, 186 passing, two touchdowns, ran for 25 yards in that loss. Central Michigan beat uh, their rival Ohio, 30-27. to Daniel Richardson, 257, one touchdown, two interceptions. Lou Nichols ran for 186 yards of offense, or 186 and a touchdown. They had 461 total yards of offense. This, again, should be another shootout. I keep going with Toledo, and they keep, you know, not being able to do it. Um, both teams kind of like to change their quarterbacks a lot. I'm, I'm kind of having trouble with this. I'm kind of leaning towards Central Michigan in that one. I'll go with Central Michigan. Hey, right, Bowling Green in Northern Illinois. I thought Bowling Green was going to get better. They lost to Akron 35-20. to Matt McDonald, 257 passing, two touchdowns. Threw three interceptions. Uh, Tyrone Broden, four catches, 111, two touchdowns. They had five turnovers in that game. Defensively, they had four sacks. Northern Illinois had a good win for them. They beat Toledo 22-20. to Rocky Lombardi, 154 passing a pick, but he did run for 90 yards and ran for 242 as a team. Uh, shout out to their kicker, John Richardson, 5-6 of six on field goals, which is uh, all they needed to win. I'm going to say Northern Illinois looks like a pretty good MAC team this season, and I say they will beat Bowling Green. Kent State and Western Michigan, this could be a really high-scoring game. Um, the over-under for that one is 64 and a half. That means that it, this will be a fun game to watch. If you like offense, watch this one. Kent State, they beat Buffalo 48-38. to Dustin Crumb, 407 passing, three touchdown passes, plus ran for 72 yards and two touchdowns on the ground. Marquez Cooper, 112 rushing and a touchdown. Dante Cephas, 13 catches, 186 yards and three receiving touchdowns. They had 633 total yards of offense. Western Michigan, they lost 45-20 to to Ball State. Caleb Ellaby, 257 passing, two picks. Um, ran for one. They had four turnovers in that game. They can't do that or Kent State will destroy them with that offense. Like I said, I think this will go back and forth, but I'm going to say Kent State. <sighs> Mr. Michigan looked like the, maybe a good team in the MAC, but then Ball State just trampled them, so I'm going to go Kent State winning what could be a close game. All right, Arizona and Colorado, maybe the two worst teams in the Pac-12. Colorado, Colorado, Arizona lost 34-16 in UCLA. Jordan McLeod passed for 182 in that one. Colorado coming off a bye. Two weeks ago, they lost to USC 37-14. Brandon Lewis, 162, passing a touchdown to pick. They only had 242 total yards. Arizona, I think they've lost something like 16 or 17 straight games. I'm actually going to say they win this game. They looked improved this year. Uh, Colorado's offense is not an offense. It's just not there. I'm going to say Arizona actually wins that one. All right, a big game in the Mountain West, Fresno State in Wyoming. Fresno coming off a bye two weeks ago. They were actually upset in Hawaii, 27-24, mainly because they turned over six times Excuse me, in that game. Jacob Hayner, 3-8 to passing, three touchdowns, but he threw four interceptions and fumbled one. Zane Pope, five catches, 113, two touchdowns. Like I said, they had six turnovers. They put up 505 yards of offense. Facing a Wyoming team that's normally a good defense, they lost to Air Force 24-14, Sean Chambers. Not very good passing, 11-28, 143, one touchdown, one uh, rushing touchdown as well. Uh, I'm going to say this will be kind of close just because Wyoming's defense, but I think Fresno State bounces back. I think Hayner doesn't turn it over five times, and I think Fresno State will win that one. All right, Vanderbilt, South Carolina. Vanderbilt got shut out 42 to nothing by Florida. Ken Seals, 
only 192 passing, two interceptions. South Carolina, they lost 45 to 20 to a good Tennessee offense. Luke Dottie, 167 passing. Defensively, they did have six sacks in that game. I think South Carolina, they're a mediocre team. They're 3 3, and that's about what their record is. Vanderbilt is a really, really bad team. South Carolina is not the kind of offense that can just pour it on anybody, but they should be able to score just enough to get by Vanderbilt. All right, Texas Tech and Kansas. Texas Tech, they lost to TCU 52-31. to Henry Columbia, 344 passing and a pick. So, Roderick Thompson ran from 118 and three touchdowns. They did put up 558 total yards of offense. Kansas, they're coming off a bye. Two weeks ago, they got killed by Iowa State 59-7. Jason Bean only passed for 120 and a, and a pick. I think Texas Tech should be able to get by Kansas and uh, maybe even pretty, pretty big. All right, Rice and UTSA. Rice coming off a bye. They beat Southern Miss two weeks ago, 24-19. Jake Constantine, 192 passing and two touchdowns. Defensively at five six sacks and forced four turnovers in that game. UTSA, they won a shootout against Western, Western Kentucky, 52-46. They do it, did it through the air, which I didn't think they could do. They have a really good running back in Sincere McCormick, but normally they win their games with running, defense, and pretty you know good quarterback play. But in this game, it was great quarterback play by Frank Harris. 349 passing, six touchdown passes, ran for 51 yards, and received a touchdown. Had a receiving touchdown in that one. Cecil McCormick still had his uh, yards, 120 rushing. DeCorian Chark, seven catches, 160 yards, three touchdowns. They had 564 yards of offense. They are 6-0. In the season, I think they go to 7-0 and should be able to take care of Rice. Alabama and Mississippi State. Alabama, get, they got upset uh, by Texas A&M. lost 41-38. Bryce Young, he's still right there in it for the Heisman. Passed for 369 and three touchdowns. Brian Robinson ran for 147. Jamison Williams, 10 catches, 146 yards and two touchdowns. They had a block punt return for a touchdown and put up 522 of offense. Mississippi State. They're coming for buying coincidentally. Two weeks ago, they beat Texas A&M 26 to 22. Will Rogers 408 passing and three touchdowns. Mackay Polk 13 catches, 126 and two touchdowns. Uh, seeing how A&M was able to move it against Alabama, Mississippi State's offense might be able to move it like that against Bama. But this is Nick Saban. It's Alabama. They're pissed off. I'd hate to be Mississippi State right now. I'm gonna say Alabama wins uh, that game. All right, the Liberty Flames and then Louisiana Monroe Warhawks. Liberty, they beat Middle Tennessee State 41-13. With, with, even though Malik Willis had kind of a subpar passing game, he passed for 222, two touchdowns. He had three interceptions, or they could have won by even more. He did run for 80 yards and a touchdown as well. Demario Douglas, six catches, 156 yards and a touchdown. Louisiana Monroe, they got... Uh, they lost pretty badly to Georgia State, 55 to 21. Chandler Rogers, 208 passing, two touchdowns, plus 72 rushing yards in that one. But I don't think they'll be, I don't think they will be able to keep up with Liberty. I think Malik Willis bounces back and has an astounding game, and I think Liberty wins and wins big. All right, Colorado State and New Mexico. Colorado State had a nice win against San Jose State. Uh, winning 32 to 14, Todd Sentio 232 passing a touchdown plus 37 rushing yards. Ajon Vivens ran for 114. Shout out the kicker, Caden Camper. He was six for six for field goals on the day. Defensively, they forced three turnovers in that game. <clears throat> New Mexico couldn't do anything against San Diego State, 31 to seven. Offensively, they only had 193 total yards and didn't actually score. Their touchdown was a fumble return for a touchdown. Uh, Colorado State looks pretty good this year. Now, Colorado State doesn't blow teams out, so this may be closer. Um, kind of a close game, but I still think Colorado State should be able to win. And the final one of these midday 330 games, Utah State and UNLV. Utah State coming off a bye. They played BYU pretty close. They lost 34-20. to it was, it was a lot closer than that most of the game. Logan Bonner, 276 passing, two touchdowns a pick. Devin Tompkins, nine catches, 125, and a touchdown. UNLV coming off a bye two weeks ago. They lost to UTSA, 24-17. Cam Friel, 307, one touchdown and two picks. Steve Jenkins, five catches, 114, and a touchdown. They had three turnovers in that game. Uh, I'm not Utah State, they brought that offense over from Arkansas State. They're one of the top passing teams in the country, statistically speaking. 
Um, I'm not sure that UNLV can really keep up. I think Utah State should be able to come out of that one with a victory. So those are my midday games. Check out my other videos later. Peace.